up, everybody? What up, everybody? Let's talk about it. It's April Dawn. What up, everybody? It's April Dawn. What up, everybody? It's April Dawn. Let's talk about it. What's up, everybody? It's April Dawn. Let's talk about it. We are in his eye, baby. The Handmaid's Tale, season four, episode seven. When I tell you they are bringing it this season, whew, child, they are bringing it. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell y'all? It's everything, okay? This episode, we got some confrontations. We got that scene, that scene I wanted to see, baby, it happened. I'm so excited about it. Oh, first, before we get started, I want to say thank everybody for the birthday wishes. I made it to Club 40, okay? I couldn't drink. I couldn't do anything, you know, too much. But a bitch made it. Ah, I'm 40 years old now. I know. I don't feel any different than I did when I was in my 30s, pretty much. I feel a lot wiser than I was when I was a lot younger. So, you know, um, yeah, thank you to everybody who sent me birthday wishes on any kind of social media. Um, I know some of you have found my Twitter. You know what I'm saying? I don't even be on Twitter like that. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited about the fact that you guys took the time to just wish me happy birthday. So thank you. Once again, thank for all your support. Hey, to my new subscribers, how y'all doing? And I don't want to waste any of your time, so let's go ahead and get into it. We start off with June is on the edge of this boat ramp, and we like, June, take a step into the promised land, all right? Please, girl, do it. And Mark is there to greet her, and he says he welcomes her to Canada, and they ask her a few questions about will she be persecuted if she gets if she goes back to Gilead because she's a woman? Will she be subject to torture? You know, things of this nature to so that she can um, get asylum in Canada. So she says, hello, my name is June Osborne, and I seek asylum in Canada. And so they like, all right, ma'am, come this way. And then we hear, hello. My love has come along. My lonely days are over. And life is like a song. Oh, at last. Woo, the skies above saying april so anywho flowers are blooming the place is beautiful they're showing her where she's going to be staying in the meantime until they can debrief her and you know kind of get her up to speed about what's going on now soon just gazes out the window as moira and all the men around her are talking about well moira was talking about how beautiful the place is that she's staying in it's way nicer than they house and then you know the men are talking about how she needs to debrief and you know it's going to be several different processes that happen so you know she's got to debrief she got to get ready for um you know them to come in and have a visit with her or at least but she tells her she's gonna come back so luke is like okay um or, uh, what do you want to do do you want to chill would you like to go get something to eat and you know he kind of jumps back into this normal mode as if things aren't still you know out of place in her mind like she's still trying to process what has just happened right so obviously she's a little off kilter and he seems very nervous around her it was kind of like new people when they meet each other or whatever that's what it felt like to me so he's like asking her what she want to do she goes into the bathroom and she begins to take a shower and here we have another symbolic taking off of the clothes that she has on her being able to take a shower in a real shower and then we see all the scars that are on her back so not only does she has mental scars you know from everything that she's dealt with being in Gilead and now she, she also has physical scars from the torture and the abuse that she was subject to while she was there and I'm sure a lot of these girls have so similar types of things um, like Emily for instance because we know she did had the, the lady part surgery okay so you know she got some physical scars Luke is kind of like fixing dinner up he got room service for them so he's kind of trying to you know organize things and get them together he sees him doing it but she closes the door and she lays down in the bed basically she sits down and he finally goes over to check on her she is resting in the bed peacefully home girl probably ain't had a good night's rest in a decent bed and who knows how long so she wakes up the next day and apparently she's been sleeping for 17 hours straight and they kind of joke about you know this is a new milestone between them and he's just like I can't believe it I can't believe you're here and she invites him to come and sit with her and she's like damn you know I miss rooms I miss room service I'm sorry you know did you eat like she's trying to check on him and you know he's like you need to stop apologizing like all that I'm sorry stuff you're like I should be the one that's apologizing he tried to get her and he tried to get Hannah out but he failed and he's so sorry about that he says he doesn't blame her if she can't forgive him for not being able to get them out 
Hannah knows how much we love her. And he's like, well, how do you know that? And she was like, because I saw her. They brought me to like a farm or whatever. And I saw her for about 10 minutes. And he's like, how does she look? Like he begins to cry. And we finally get some emotion, like I said, or some mention of Hannah from Luke. So apparently he has been. I mean, I know that's her daddy. You know, he had been wanting to. To, to find out where she is and all that kind of stuff and get her out. But at the same time, they just never verbally expressed it. And I need it to be expressed, okay? I need you to break it down to me like I'm in kindergarten. You need to miss your baby. For real, okay? Why you cuckoo, cuckoo, and over Nicole, you got a whole daughter that's 15 years old. I don't know how to grow that. 10 years old. And you ain't said her name at all. So I'm glad we finally got that. That was a little fan service for me personally. She tells him this story about how she saw Hannah. And she saw, told Hannah, you know, Hannah's big. Hannah's beautiful. You know, and she was mad at them. She said if she tried to find her. And she said, yes, I tried to find her. And why didn't you try harder? And she told her that she wishes that she could get to, you know, her out of there. But she's so sorry. She, she couldn't protect her. And she says that her daddy and mom would always love her. Her. In her and Luke, they embrace and they comfort each other. Now, I don't remember this happening. I was like, did this happen the first time she, she saw Hannah? And was like, you tried to come and get me? Because I don't want to say she was lying, but my spirit said she was lying, girl. She was just lying. Okay, she was just telling that man something he wanted to hit to make him feel good about his daughter. But that girl ain't know who she was, baby. Even if she wasn't lying and she was talking about the first time she saw Hannah, it seems like the second time you would have told him, hey, she didn't even know who I was, though. The last time I saw her, she was scared of me. Like, she didn't tell him none of that. She told him whatever made him feel good in the moment so do y'all remember if that's true if that actually happened the first time she met hannah or did she just make that whole thing up because i'm thinking that she made the whole thing up but i could be wrong let me know in the comments so then we see june she's debriefing with mark i kind of feel like somebody else should be in there with mark because mark seems to have this feeling for serena that i don't like and i think it's not objective I think he sees her for who she is. She knows that he knows that she's manipulative, but he is falling under the spell like a serial killer. You know how they get them and they had you all entwined in their story. Y'all, come on. I don't like it. And I feel like somebody else should be in the room with him. He should not always be by himself with all these people. You know, he's just amazed at, amazed at June's presence. And he's asking her what motivated her to, like, throw herself out on the line like that to save those kids. And she says, well, you know, I made a promise that they would hurt the way that they hurt us. So you can tell that her decision to get them kids, I mean, I guess you could say it was to help the kids, but at the same time, it really was to stick it to them and let them know, hey, we can do stuff to you too, just like you do stuff to us. You take away our kids, we gonna take away your kids, or subsequently our kids. He says, who is they? And she's like, the kidnappers, like Serena, you know, they took everything from us, you know? So I want to take something from them. And he's like, okay, let's take a break because you're sounding a little bit revengey. Okay, it's getting a little revengey up in here. I don't know if that's gonna look good for the case. Let's take a break. And she asks when Nicole is coming. He says, when we're done, she's gonna come. You know, more we're gonna bring her in a few minutes. And he was like, and Luke was like, well, we need to be done now. Like, can we be done right now? And Mark was like, well, you know, it's better to debrief while you're still lucid, you know, while it's been a short time. The longer it goes on, the memories get tainted by new experiences. And he was like, um, I'm going to take my wife to go see our baby. OK, and then she will come back and talk to you at a later date. OK. And Mark was like, OK, I mean, OK, I guess. Go on, take her. When they get home, we see Emily and Maura there with Nicole and... And June is reunited with Nicole, and we get that another piece of fan service moment where she gets to hug and kiss on her precious big head ass baby. That baby is big. Now, let me stop talking about people, baby. <laughs> That's somebody, baby, in real life. The baby is super cute. Nicole is really cute. She's just a big ass baby. Okay, I'm like, baby, honey. She ain't playing no games. Nicole is serving body, yaddy, yaddy, all right? She holds the baby. She cries. She rocks the baby in her arms and tells the baby she's so lucky to have Luke and Moira. They raising her. And, you know, she kind of, like, downplay herself as her mother and, like, play up them as mother and father. And they kind of see this dynamic over the episode of Moira and Luke really have taken on the mother and father responsibility. I mean, it's not like they, they have a choice, you know? So they just doing, they just raising the baby or whatever. And you can tell that she kind of feels like I'm not this baby's mother. I'm the baby mama, but I'm not this baby's 
mother. Like, I feel like she feels like she should do more because of the Hannah situation, but she just can't because she just traumatized. The girl need a, like, girl, give yourself some grace is what I be wanting to tell her. Girl, you done went through hell and back. Like Marva said, we did what we had to do to survive. Girl, give yourself some grace. Like, relax, sis. Then we see Serena praying to the God so we can see that she is fronting in the name of Jesus. I know God is in heaven like, girl, I know you lying. I know you lying. Okay, why are you calling my name down here for this foolishness? Y'all down here doing stop playing with the Lord like this, okay? Serena is praying to God. She is thankful for her pregnancy. She's thankful for the baby. And, you know, she just prays to God for strength to, to raise this baby by herself. And, you know, she's going to atone for all of her sins. And, you know, she realizes that Mark is behind her watching her. You can't tell me she didn't know he was standing right there and could feel his presence, okay? How to be walking around in quiet ass houses in Gilead. She knew he was standing right there. She was putting on, honey. She was throwing 20 on 10. Hallelujah, God. I just want to thank you, Lord, for being here to have a breath in my body this morning. Thank you, Jesus. And I want to say this baby that you have put in my body, it is indeed a miracle. Yes, it is, God. And I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. I was like, Serena is doing the most. Serena be the relative that be jumping in the casket at the funeral. That's what she is, but wasn't shit. And she notices that Mark is there and they begin to talk. And you know, the little banter between them suggests that he knows that she's manipulating him or trying to manipulate him, right? Basically, she was giving him a, why you up here listening to me? You want to be manipulated because I do that shit, okay? She was like, have you seen her? I know she's here. I've heard that she's here. My lawyer told me that, you know, she's going to make my comp case complicated, but I'm sure you don't care about that. Like, she always throw that little stuff in. You know, that's a narcissist behavior. Like, you don't care about me, so you don't care about her being being here and ruining my whole life and sending me to jail forever. No, he don't care about you, girl, because he's supposed to be doing his job. His whole job is to pretend like he care about you so that he can put you in jail for the rest of your life because you a criminal. But we see what you're trying to do, Serena, and the shit ain't gonna work this time, baby. We on season four, baby. He like, girl, listen, your husband want to see you just like he's requested to see you every single day before um, or every single day since he found out he's going to be a father. She's like, I don't want to see him. I don't want to see him at all. I don't want to talk to him. And he was like, look, you probably have more influence over him now that June is here because she deduces that June is there. You know, he's scared. He's going to be scared of her, you know, putting them both in jail or whatever she can do. So you probably have more over influence over him now if you can get him to cooperate and recan his statement against you. Then, you know, that's going to help both of us. So apparently Mark got some pressure from the office himself to get this, this taken care of and make sure this case go through and he go to jail. So Serena goes down to visit Waterford and she went there and child, he quoted scriptures, praise unto the Lord, hallelujah, and sing a new song, okay? Like he is quoting, I shall walk through the valley of the shadow of death and I shall feel no evil. Like he is giving you all the Bible scriptures in quotes, honey. Okay, I am changing. I made a baby. He made a baby. He is excited. She is like, I don't know why you even doing all that, baby, because ain't nothing changed between us. And he said, everything has changed between us. God wants us to be together, girl. This pregnancy showed us that God wants me and you to be together. And she's like, it's not your place to be speaking for the Lord. The Lord didn't say that. Okay, he didn't say that. Did you hear the Lord say that? I didn't hear him say that. He said, it's too late. He says, I want to be a good husband to you, and I want to be a good father to my son. And she was like, it's too late for us. We're not going to be together. He said, it's not too late, girl. This pregnancy has showed us that it's not too late. She was like, my pregnancy. My pregnancy? And he was like, girl, this pregnancy is... <laughs> the shade. The shade was amazing when he said, girl, this pregnancy is as much as your... This pregnancy is as much your pregnancy as Jewel Osborne's pregnancy was yours. Like, girl, you... <laughs> I was like... <laughs> a black person wrote that. And you can't tell me. You can't tell me no different. You can't tell me a black person or a, a LGBTQIA family member wrote that. Okay? Because that was a read. Okay? <laughs> That baby is half mine, just like June baby was all hers. Bitch, <laughs> you try to act like that was your pregnancy too. <laughs> she was like, guard. As he's walking out, he's like, Serena, no, for real, I need you to listen. Like, June could put us under the jail, bitch. Okay, so what we need to do is team up, get together, 
That way we can help each other out. I'll recant my story against you. You know, we can work together to try to stay alive because she can take your baby from you. Like, girl, she can do everything that needs, should be done to us. She can do it. Okay. So we need to work together. And she like, huh. But you know she gonna take him up by the end of it Like you already know then June gonna put that pressure Okay <laughs> And she going to end up folding. June wakes up and she walks into the living room and in the kitchen and they making breakfast with the baby. It's just like they a whole family and she's like an outsider. That's how she was standing over there looking. But she goes over there with the baby and Moira's telling her, I'm going to take, you know, the baby to the grocery store and because we need some things and give you guys some time, you know, y'all could be with each other. And June is like, I want to go to the grocery store. And she was like, are you sure? I mean, you've been in Gilead all this time. You don't want this culture shock. And she was like, no, I think I'm up for a culture shock. Like, I'm good or whatever so they all get their little stuff together and they go to the grocery store oh and she is inviting rita and emily over later on tonight and they like okay i mean you sure you want to do all of this <laughs> so she like all right so they go to the grocery store we can see she's kind of smiles and looks around and she walking like wow this is a bit of normalcy you know something i haven't seen in a while moira walks away to go change the baby and like i said they're fuddling with the baby i need to change the baby now and then we got to put her down for a nap you know she's just staring at them like you know wow they're really good parents look at me they i could just leave again and go back to gilead because we know that's what she finna do <laughs> When Moira goes to the bathroom, Luke is like, oh, my God, life with a one-year-old. And she's like, yeah, I remember. You know what I'm saying? And that was a very awkward moment as well. It was lots of awkward moments in this episode. And she stares at this couple with the kid. They're not really paying attention to the kid. Kind of wanders off, and she kind of looks at the kid, and she looks at them. We can tell that she's about to have a PTSD moment, a little light panic attack or whatever. So as she's looking at the chips and she go looks through, she sees these girls with hoods on their head, and she kind of, like, starts to have have a moment she start breathing hard you know she's starting to have a little issue or whatever so when they come out we realize it's just two girls in costumes i guess this is like a joke or this is the thing in, you know in other countries in canada i guess they you know i don't know same thing she sits down by the bottles of water she has a ptsd moment she's remembering everything that she's been through all the time she's been beat hit raped child holiday it was a lot that was going on and she sits down and, and it kind of has a little minor panic attack so we see later on that night the girls come over emily is over there june is low-key still tripping like trying to put on a happy face but we can tell that she's going through right here at this moment and she meets oliver um she gives him a hug it was it was a little it was nice R rita was like <sighs> Rita comes in, she hugs Rita, and Rita is like, praise F and B, bitch, you made it out. We made it! So Emily talks about her wife, you know, later on the night, how they're adjusting to being back like to normal or whatever how her wife is waiting for her to move back into the bed and you know more was kind of like girl everybody left that place with weird feelings about sex so don't feel bad about it or whatever and she talks about when well, you're making it work with Uma she was like girl no I done messed that up too June is like do you think that you ever June that says June says do you ever think about like what we did in that place and do you deserve this do we deserve to be here and emily says yeah i do think about what i did when i was there you know some of the things that i did and she says and more was like we did what we had to do to survive bitch we had to live okay they tried to tear us down they tried to take everything from us but guess what we want it back give me my stuff back shout out to ty tribute okay give it back to me i want my stuff and we took you back. So don't feel bad about nothing you did. You had to bust a bitch head because we was had head busts. That's what we was doing over there. We was busting heads to the white meat. That's what you had to do to live. Girl, that's what you had to do. She ain't say all that, but you know, I'm saying that today. <laughs> June is trying to get the tea. She like, y'all heard about Serena? Anybody heard anything? Anybody? Anybody in this bitch? Anybody? And Rita is like, I I went to go see her. And she's like, oh, you went to go see her? Well, what happened, bitch? Uh, well, you know, she needed my help. You know, she's a narcissist. You know, totally was trying to manipulate me or whatever. And she was like, and you know, she's, um, you know, she's, uh, she's pregnant. Everybody was like, oh, shit, man. So, she pregnant. What you mean she pregnant? And June is pissed, okay? She's super pissed. Well, she says, is it his? The commander's, and Rita's like, yes, it's his. 
And she was like, well, fuck her. You know, I don't care. And Moira was like, that's right, because that bitch ugly anyway. You know what I'm saying? Fuck her, whatever. You know what I'm saying? We need some more wine. We need some more wine like that. June is sitting there about to, her head is about to burst. You can see her, 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 the June face was on 10. June face was on 15. Like, girl, I'm finna take everything you got from you, girl. I might even, like, June was looking like I will stab you in that baby. Poor baby. Okay? <laughs> what I'm saying? June was looking like she was ready to risk it all. Do you understand me? Well, Moira goes into the kitchen and she sees Uma dropping off a gift for June and she stops her and, you know, she says, do you want to come in? And Uma's like, no, I'm good. You know, well, how is work? Well, they won't let us go anywhere, you know, outside of Canada these days because of everything that's going on. But they still have a fighting chance because they bought in a major intelligence asset, which is June, right? Getting ready to leave and more of us like, you know, I think the world of you and I don't want us to be over. You chose your friend over me, girl. You chose your friend over me and, you know, my work and your work too. You chose her over everybody. And I know where I stand with you. And she's like, you know, we need to fight about this so we can move on. Uh, you know, I want to go ahead and have this fight because you, you shouldn't feel like that's where you stand or whatever. And she says, um, I felt like the last girlfriend could have been forever and then she wasn't. So I kind of feel like you could be forever, you know, so I, I want to fight. And the girl was like, fuck, bitch, I mean, <sighs> okay, girl, let's have the fight or whatever. Just call me because it's cold and I'm going to go home. And I'm going to go ahead and take you back or whatever. After the party is over with and they've cleaned up, June is drinking some wine and Luke is cleaning up. And, you know, like I said, it's still an awkward moment, but they begin to hug and kiss each other. But she pulls away from him. She can't do it. She feels weird about it. He apologizes and, you know, she grabbed the wine and she runs away. As he sleeps later on that night, like I said, June head was finna explode, bitch, with this news about Serena. So she calls Mark herself and she meets him outside, gets in the car with him and goes to see Serena. And we got to see the scene that we wanted to see, baby. Serena up in there playing with the Lord once again, talking about she prayed for this chance and she humbly Thanks the Lord for this visit. June was like, you would, bitch, because you never gave me credit for anything, ho. Serena tells her that she believes that God brought her here so that she could atone for the wrongs that she has done. She, ha she can make amends for the things that she has done. June tells her, bitch, I brought myself here. Okay, the Lord didn't bring me here. I brought myself here to tell you how much I hate you, bitch. Okay? How you don't deserve to make amends with nobody, bitch. All you deserve is a lifetime full of suffering and shame, ho. That's what you deserve forever. You destroyed my life, my family, my friends, my country, and my child. Nobody is less worthy to make amends than your motherfucking me. Serena say, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're sorry? Okay. <laughs> Gets on her knees and she says she's not begging for forgiveness. She's begging for the Lord's mercy and the Lord's understanding. Uh, do you know why God made you pregnant? Because when he killed that baby, inside of you, you will feel a fraction of what you did to us. You took everything from us. Do you understand me? Do you understand me? I said, I'm scared of this bitch. I think they was trying to mirror a scene where they, where she had the thing over June's mouth and she was screaming, do you understand y'all? In the past season, it's just giving me a deja vu where Serena did this to June one time. And so now it's like a bookend where she's doing it to her, screaming, do you understand me? Do you understand me? And baby, I was scared. I was like, June will stab you right now, girl. You and that baby will die right there on oh, in the jail. Just like she'll just walk to the door and be like, he leaves that room like, bye. Mark comes to get her. She leaves Serena in shambles. 
okay? And I think personally that this is all a part of, this is a plan set up by Mark to come to Serena with the bullshit, okay? That's what I think it is because I think that Mark know what he doing. He sent that girl in there because he knew that girl was going to read her down. He knew that Serena was going to run to Fred was what she did and she was going to get him to recant the story and that's going to help him ultimately. So I really think he is the master plan behind all of this, okay? Because he ain't really got no important part, but he ain't left the show yet, okay? So she leaves Serena in the shambles and she goes back home and she gets in the bed with Luke and she climbs on top of him. She started kissing on him, hugging on him. He like, what time is it? You know, and then she started mess playing with his wee wee and she get on him, baby. She start to go and like this. And he like, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. And she covered his mouth. And that's when I was like, girl, this is our word. Okay. And this is not okay. Now we understand that you got our worded a lot. Okay. But Luke did not our word you. And you cannot go around here being a predator, ma'am, um, doing this to your husband. Like, that was not acceptable to me. I was very uncomfortable, and I didn't like it. And I'm scared of June now, okay? She definitely R-worded her husband. He was laying there like, what the is happening, okay? Like, <laughs> she got my mouth covered, and I don't like that. I don't like that at all. So the next day they wake up, you know, they playing with the baby outside. She got this serial killer sociopathic ass look on her face. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I got you last night. And I'm playing with this baby today. I'm good. You know what I'm saying? I'm good. And we get a, a, a voiceover and we get a voiceover of her talking to Mark debriefing about Serena tells him that Serena is a monster. She's a sociopath and she's a consummate actor. And, you know, all she has is hatred and rage. And underneath that is nothing but a miserable bitch basically <laughs> she called her we see serena goes to fred for help she tells him you know they need to work together and be a team and that's what they're gonna do and he like praise be blessed be the fruit okay and then we see um she telling him that she'll do anything talking about serena she'll do anything to feel okay even for a second um if it gets her what she wants and then we kind of see that this is paralleling with her her you know what i'm saying with june because luke is looking at her play with the baby why this whole voice is going over like this bit is a little crazy like i don't know this ain't the same mm -mm. oh he looking like something ain't right with this girl she not the same person i married this woman got some real issues or whatever and so she's and as she ends it with saying if you feel yourself starting to get sucked into serena run for your life so all in all, I thought it was a great episode. I mean, kept you on the edge of your seat. And those two actresses are on fire. Give them the awards, baby. Give them some awards because I wanted to see this. And June said everything I needed for her to say. I don't want the baby in Serena's stomach to die because I'm just not an advocate of people babies dying. But I do want her to have the baby and I want them to take it away from her. Like she took away, like she took away June's baby. And like these hoes be taking away people babies like you wrote in that dumbass book. And you got everybody doing this stupid stuff and believing this BS. Okay, and I want y'all to start playing, stop playing with the Lord. That's what I want you to do. I want you to stop playing with the Lord. Because he don't want no parts of this mess. I want to hear what you guys' thoughts were about The Handmaid's Tale Season 4, Episode 7. I think we have three more episodes left, if I'm not mistaken. Let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments or whatever. I'm sorry about the late videos this week. It was my birthday week. If you saw me earlier this week, I had... I put up two videos with no background because I left all my stuff at school. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I'm back to my normally scheduled program. I still have, I think I'm going to go ahead and do 911 because I didn't realize that last week was the season finale. Um, but they did do a good job with the season finale. So I think I'm going to do both 911s in one video. So what do y'all think about that? Okay. So like I said, thank you for birthday, birthday wishes. Let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will holler at you guys next week. Peace.